Today we are going to revise the subject matter for Zoom meant for the students preparing for community exams. This preparation video is designed such that you can score maximum marks in this subject. Architecture is very very important guys. If you can able to remember the concepts what you are going to discuss today, that's more than enough. This video is going to be the end of my for Zoom. In this video, the first topic is I am going to talk about the detailed architecture of microprocessor 8086. Second, I need to talk about addressing mode, and third one is I need to talk about instruction set. The fourth one is I need to talk about subroutines. In the case of subroutines, I need to talk about macros and functions of procedure. What is the basic difference between a macro and a procedure? I need to discuss. And the last topic is I need to talk about what is an interrupt, what are the uses of interrupt, what are the types of interrupts that is present in microprocessor 8086. All those things I'm going to discuss in this video. If I'm talking about buses in microprocessor 8086, we are having three bus. The first one is address bus, and the second one is data bus followed by control bus. We know that whenever microprocessor wants to communicate with the peripheral, it needs to generate to an address, nothing but for a particular memory location it has to point so that can be achieved with the help of address bus so address will be generated by microprocessor or cpu so address bus is always unidirectional in the case of microprocessor 8086 the address bus width is 20 bit wide right now if i'm talking about data bus with the help of data bus what you are going to do is we are going to perform read operation or write operation nothing but between microprocessor and memory, we are going to share the data, nothing but we are going to store the data or we are going to retrieve the data. At that time, the data bus, what we are going to use should be a bidirectional one. And in the case of microprocessor 8086, the data bus width is 16 bit wide. Next, if I am talking about control bus, you need to have a control over the peripheral, nothing but the data bus has to be enabled or disabled between your microprocessor and memory proper handshaking signals should take place and that is achieved with the help of control bus in the case of microprocessor 8086 the control bus is of 16 bit wide and the control bus is bidirectional one there are three levels of programming they are machine language assembly language high level language this machine language or binary language you are going to write in terms of zeros and one computer can easily understand and it can execute easily but if I am talking about assembly language, this machine language you are going to convert into characters and strings and you are forming an assembly level language. So the example for assembly level language is microcontroller 8051 language or if I am talking about microprocessor it's 8085 or 8086 language is assembly level language. So this assembly level language has to be converted into machine language so at that time you are in need of assembler. Now similarly, you are having high level language which is similar to an English type of language. You are in need of conversion of this high level language to machine level language. So you are going to make use of compiler or interpreter. Now if I am talking about 8086 architecture, it is developed by Intel and it is an enhanced version of microprocessor 8085. Now in the case of microprocessor 8085, the data bus is of 8 bit wide. But in this case, it is of 16 bit wide. It contains approximately 29,000 transistors fabricated using HMOS technology and the size of 8086 microprocessor is 1 MB nothing but you will be having 20 address bus nothing but 20 bit address bus which is equals to 2 power 10 cross 2 power 10 what is 2 power 10 it is 1 KB cross 1 KB nothing but it is 1 MB so the addressing capacity is up to 2 power 20. So the data bus is of 16 bit wide and the address bus is of 20 bit wide and the control bus is of 16 bit wide. So this is very very important and here in order to save the pins what you are going to do is we are going to multiplex data bus and address bus. It is a 40 pin dual inline package with pin number 1 and pin number 20 is connected to ground and pin number 40 is VCC. Pin number 40 is VCC it supports 256 vector interrupt. Now, if I'm talking about operating frequency of 8086 microprocessor, it is 5 MHz, 8086 version 1, it is up to 10 MHz, version 2, it is up to 8 MHz. 
Now, if I am broadly classifying the architecture, I can classify into bus interface unit and execution unit. What is the use of bus interface unit means? It is used to generate address. The physical address is calculated as segment register multiplied by 10 in hexadecimal or 16 in decimal plus offset gives the physical address. It supports 6 byte queue and it supports pipelining that is fetch, decode, execute. You can simultaneously execute. Now, what is the use of this execution unit means? It contains the register set of 8086 except segment register and instruction pointer. It has a 16-bit ALU which is going to perform arithmetic and logical operations. Also, it is going to have a flag register which is going to tell the status after the arithmetic and logical operations you are going to perform. Next, if I am talking about segments of microprocessor 8086, we are having four segments. The first one is data segment, code segment, stack segment and extra segment. So what is the need of data segment, code segment, all those things we are going to discuss. Now, in order to make use of data segment or in order to initialize the data segment, the assembler directive is you have to write it as dot data. Similarly, if you want to make use of code memory, you have to write it as dot code. In order to make use of stack memory, you have to write it as dot stack. But you can't make use of extra segment, nothing but forcefully you can't make use of extra segment. Now, if you want to initialize input output variables, at that time you are going to make use of data segment. Or if you want to display any information, it is similar to printf, at that time you are going to make use of data segment, nothing but your message you are going to store it in data segment memory. What is the use of code segment? The program or the code you are going to store it in code segment. If I am talking about stack segment, if whenever you are performing push and pop operations, nothing but intermediate results you are going to store or whenever you are executing call instruction or jump instruction, at that time stack memory is used. How are you going to store the data with the help of push operation? How are you going to retrieve the data by pop operation? Number of push instructions should be equal to number of pop instructions. So at the time you want to make use of stack memory. In order to initialize stack memory, we want to make use of assembler directive that is dot stack. If I'm talking about extra segment, whenever you want to make use of string manipulation instructions, microprocessor by default it is going to make use of extra segment. This is how you are going to make use of extra segment. If I'm talking about general purpose registers in the case of microprocessor 8086, we are having four general purpose register AX, BX, CX and DX. Now what is the use of this AX, BX, CX, DX you should know and how we are going to split this AX, BX, CX, DX. Now this AX, BX, CX, DX is of 16 bit wide so you can perform all arithmetic operations as well as logical operations. In order to use the memory efficiently what you are going to do is whenever you are performing 8 bit operation no need to make use of AX register, you can make use as either AH or AL. Nothing but AX register, you are going to split it as upper byte and lower byte. Nothing but AH and AL. Similarly, you are going to split this BX as BH and BL. CX, you are going to split it as CH and CL. Similarly, DX, you are going to split it as DH and DL. Now, what is the use of this accumulator? So, whenever you are performing any arithmetic operations, straight away you can make use of this accumulator, nothing but AX register you can make use. Now, if I am talking about BX register, it is used as a base register for address calculation. CX, we know that. CX register will be acting like a default counter or implied counter or implicit counter. So, your CX register will be acting like a default counter. DX register, whenever you are performing, 16 bit multiplication at that time DX register is used or whenever you are performing 32 bit by 16 bit division at that time you are going to make use of this DX register. Not only that, it is used to store the address of IO operations. So this is the use of this general purpose register. Now if I am talking about pointers, we are having three pointers. The first one is instruction pointer, base pointer and stack pointer. Now if I am talking about index register, we are having two index register. The first one is source index also denoted by SI and the second one is destination index also denoted by DI. Now if I am talking about program status word, you are having 16 bit program status word out of that 7 are unused, you are having only 9 program status words. So each bit of program status word you are going to refer it as flag. So you are having two units of flag. The first one is status flag and the second one is 
control flag or machine control flag. We know that we are having 16 bits of flags that is PSW. This is bit number 0 and this is bit number 15. Nothing but this is MSB and this is LSB. Now, how to remember the flag sequence is in one day international tendril curse code 0 all people cry. This is a simple trick how you can remember. Now, when the flag register get affected means whenever you have performed logical operations or arithmetic operations at that time by default the flag register contains will get affected. Now, if I am talking about the flag register as I discussed we are having two variants of flag. The first one is status flag and the second one is control flag or machine control flag. So this is very very important. N number of times in UGC and it exams they have asked which one falls under status flag and which falls under control flag or machine control flag. We know that direction flag, intra flag and trap flag falls under machine control flag. The status flags are overflow flag, sign flag, zero flag, auxiliary flag, parity flag and carry flag. Now, if I am talking about 8085 flags or 8080 flags, you will be having sign flag, zero flag, auxiliary flag, parity flag and carry flag. These flags falls under flags in 8085 or 8080. If I am talking about 8086, this entire thing is a flag format of 8086. Now, if I am talking about direction flag, it is used for string manipulation instructions. Also, whenever you are executing the string manipulation instructions, by default, microprocessor is going to initialize that extra segment. So, this is very, very important. If you are making direction flag as 0, then in the process of transferring the data from one memory block to another memory block or from source to destination, the first address will be the lower address. If direction flag you are going to set to 1, then the first address will be the higher address. This is one thing what we have to remember. Nothing but you have to arrange or you are going to move the data from bottom or top. It is decided by the values of direction flag that is 0 or 1. Now if I am talking about interrupt flag enable, nothing but whether you have to enable the maskable interrupts or you have to disable the maskable interrupts, that is decided by your interrupt enable flag. If you are making it as 0, then all maskable interrupts are disabled. If you are making it as 1, then CPU is going to recognize the maskable interrupts. Based on priority, the ISR will be executed. Now, if I am talking about trap flag, this is used for single step debugging. Nothing but you are going to check for the sequence. Say, suppose you have performed some arithmetic operations, you are encountering an error. What you are going to do is single step execution, nothing but step by step you are going to analyze the data and whether the program what you have written is correct or not you are going to check and whether the data what you are getting is correct or not you are going to check, nothing but for single step debugging you are going to make use of trap flag. In order to enable the single step debugging you are going to make it as 1. Now if I am talking about overflow, overflow is a conceptual overflow. Now what do you mean by this overflow means that is, now when overflow flag will be set to 1 means whenever the arithmetic operations or after arithmetic operations it can't hold the data or that data width or the register is not sufficient to hold the data at the time overflow flag will be set to 1. When overflow flag can be set the possibilities are whenever we are going to add two positive numbers and if result is negative then definitely overflow flag will be set to 1 or whenever you are going to add two negative number if the result is positive then directly overflow flag will be set to 1 whenever you are going to add a positive number with a negative number overflow flag will not be set this is very very important now if i am talking about a sign flag it is going to indicate whether the number is a positive number or a negative number how it is going to indicate means if msb of the obtained result equals to 1 then sign flag is going to indicate it as 1 that means it result is negative if msb of the obtained result is 0 then sign flag contains is 0 then result is positive again i am going to tell sign flag works on msb if msb is 0 that means the number is a positive number sign flag contents will be 0 if msb equals to 1 sign contents will be equals to 1 and it is going to tell that the number is a negative number now if i am talking about zero flag when this zero flag will get affected means whenever you are going to perform arithmetic and logical operations when the result is zero at that time zero flag will be set to 1 if result is non zero then zero flag will be zero 
If I am talking about auxiliary flag, this is for BCD arithmetic operations. Whenever there is a carry generated from lower nibble to upper nibble, at that time auxiliary flag will be set to 1, hence it is a reset. Now, if I am talking about a parity flag, now in the case of accumulator BX, CX, DX, it is of 16 bit wide. Whenever you are going to perform arithmetic and logical operations, if you want to talk about parity, then you have to consider only lower 8 bit result. If it is having even number of ones, then parity flag equals to 1, nothing but it is even parity. Hence, it is odd parity, nothing but parity flag contents would be 0. Now, if I am talking about the carry flag, whenever there is a carry generated from MSB bit or you are taking borrow to the MSB bit, at that time carry flag will be set to 1, else carry flag will be reset. Now, let us consider an example. If you are performing add AX, BX, what you are going to do is the AX contents you are going to add with BX contents and you are going to store the result in AX register. So, this is how you are going to perform 8125 plus 7925 both are in hexadecimal so i have written the binary equivalent 8 1 2 5 7 9 2 5 now what is 1 plus 1 it is 2 nothing but 0 1 here it is 0 1 0 0 1 here you are getting 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 1 1 so you are not getting any carry so carry flag is zero is there any carry from lower nibble to upper nibble there is no carry right so auxiliary carry flag is set to zero now is the result what you are getting is zero no right so zero flag is zero now if i am talking about parity flag i need to talk about lower eight bit so how many ones are there there are odd number of ones odd number of ones means parity flag bit will be zero now, is there any overflow? Whenever you are adding a positive number and a negative number, there is no overflow. So, overflow flag is 0. Overflow flag is 0. What is the sign? Sign is negative. Nothing but it is 1. Now, if I am performing add AX, BX, nothing but what I am going to do is A, B, C, D, I am going to add it with F, 8, 8, D. So, what is the result I am getting is 1 a 4 5 a so what is 1 plus 1 it is 0 1 0 what is 1 plus 1 plus 1 it is 3 nothing but 1 followed by 1 is the carry so we'll be getting 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 so here it is 1 plus 1 will is 0 1 so it's a 0 1 0 1 and then at last we'll be getting 1 so the equivalent value will be 1 a 4 5 a now carry flag is 1 is the result 0 no right so 0 flag is 0 now if i'm talking about the parity flag i need to talk about lower 8 bit so how many ones are there there are even number of ones so parity flag is set to 1 now look at over here the two numbers are negative and the result is also negative so overflow flag is not set now, if I am talking about auxiliary carry flag, there is a carry generating from lower nibble to upper nibble. At that time, auxiliary carry flag is set to 1. Now, if I am talking about a sign flag, so this value is 1, nothing but the number is negative. This is how you are going to solve. Now, if I am performing subtraction AX, BX, what it is going to do is AX minus BX, put back the result in AX only. If you are writing sub BX, AX, nothing but BX minus AX put back the result in BX register. Say suppose if I am performing 8125 minus 7925 if I am performing what I will be getting is now 1 minus 1 is 0 0 0 0. So this is again 0 0 0 0. What is 1 minus 1 it is 0 0 0. So this will become 1 0. 1 0 minus 1 is something but 2 minus 1 will be 1. Now. You have taken a borrow, you have given a borrow. So, what is 1 minus 1 it will be 0. So, it will be getting 0, 0, and then 0. So, the equivalent value is 0, 8, 0, 0 in hexadecimal. Is there any borrow you have taken? Is there any borrow you have taken to the MSB bit? No, right? So, carry flag is 0. What about the result? What you are getting? Is it a 0? No, right? So, 0 flag is 0. Now, if I am talking about a parity flag, I need to talk about lower 8 bit. In this, I am having even number of ones. Even number of ones means parity flag will be 
uh, e1 parity nothing but parity flag equals to 1 now if i'm talking about an overflow flag is there any carry that is getting generated from lower nibble to upper nibble or is there any borrow you have taken from higher nibble to lower nibble no right so auxiliary carry flag will not be set now if i'm talking about overflow flag whenever you are adding a negative number with a positive number overflow flag will not be set now if i'm talking about a sign flag sign flag value should be zero because it is going to retain the msp it is going to retain the msp now if i'm performing subtraction ax comma bx a b c d minus f 8 8 d so the equivalent value i've written over here so i need to perform subtraction what is 1 minus 1 it is 0 0 0 0 and here it is 0 0 1 0 here it should be 1 1 0 0 then 1 0 what is 2 minus 1 it is 1 so here you got 1 1 but you have given a borrow nothing but it is 1 0 what is 1 0 minus 1 nothing but 2 minus 1 it is 1 so you have given a borrow so it is 0 then it is 1 1 but you have given a borrow so it is 1 0 what is 2 minus 1 it is 1 now in order to perform this you have taken a borrow from this bit so carry flag value is 1 0 flag is this value a 0 no right so 0 flag is 0 now if I am talking about a parity flag 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 nothing but it is having odd number of ones so parity flag value is 0 1 1 1 nothing but you are getting a negative number added with the negative number you are getting negative nothing but there is no any overflow if I am talking about auxiliary flag have you taken any borrow from higher nibble to lower nibble no right or is there any carry that is getting generated from lower nibble to upper nibble no right so auxiliary flag is 0 what about the sign bit sign bit is 1 nothing but it is a negative number so I have to represent as 1 over here this is how you are going to indicate the flag status now if I am talking about minimum mode and maximum mode if microprocessor alone is executing the instructions at that time it operates in minimum mode nothing but it is not going to make use of or it is not going to take the help of coprocessor at that time we will be telling that microprocessor 8086 is operating in minimum mode in order to set this minimum mode min slash max pin should be assigned as 0 if you are making it as 1 nothing but you are going to take the help of coprocessor so this question they have asked n number of times now if i am talking about data representations you can classify the data representation in three ways binary or integer floating point or real binary coded decimal or bcd or decimal if i am talking about binary the values are zeros and one if i am talking about octal zero to seven decimal means zero to nine hexadecimal zero to nine followed by a b c d e f now in the case of C programming or C++ what you're going to do is in order to display the message you're going to make use of printf or you're going to make use of C in C out scanf all those things you are using and in order to display the next line what you're going to do is slash and you have used carriage return slash r you have used tab space slash t you have used similarly in this case what you can do is if you want line feed you can make use of 0ah carriage return you can make use of 0dh if you need space you need to make use of 20h next let us talk about addressing mode the first one is immediate addressing mode and the second one is direct addressing mode and the third one is register addressing mode and the fourth one is register indirect addressing mode fifth one is register relative addressing mode fifth one is base index addressing mode and the last one is a relative base index addressing mode so addressing mode of microprocessor 8086 is very very important now if i'm talking about assembler instruction formats label mnemonic operand 1 operand 2 followed by comments this sequence is very very important n number of times they have asked now if i'm talking about arithmetic operations you are having addition subtraction multiplication division modulus now if I'm talking about addition, you can do 8-bit addition or 16-bit addition with and without carry. So in the case of addition, if you are writing add AL comma BL, nothing but AL plus BL will be added and it will be stored back in AL register only. If I'm performing add C, AL comma BL, nothing but AL contents plus BL contents plus carry flag contents will be put back in AL register. For 16-bit, you are going to make use of AX plus BX 
store back in ax register only ax plus bx plus carry flag store back in ax register only the format is you're going to write add this is the mnemonic followed by operand 1 comma operand 2 so this is very very important now if i'm talking about subtraction so if you're performing sub al comma bl nothing but what al will be copied means al minus bl the data nothing but the result will be put back in al register only right if you are writing with the borrow it is al minus bl minus carry flag put by the result in al register only if you are performing 16 bit subtraction it is ax minus bx put back in ax ax minus bx minus carry flag contains put back in ax register only now if i am talking about multiplication you can do multiplication in two ways the first one is unsigned multiplication and the second one is signed multiplication if you are making use of mulls followed by operand 1 if this operand 1 is of 8 bit wide then the default operand is al register al multiplied by operand 1 put back the result in ax register nothing but ah and al example is mul bl what you are going to do is bl contents will be multiplied with al put back the result in ax register but if you are writing mul followed by a single operand nothing but opr1 and if this operand is of 16 bit wide then the default operand is ax register so default operand is ax register then dx ax ax multiplied by bx so in the case of unsigned multiplication what you're going to do is you are not talking about sign nothing but each and every bit is going to denote magnitude but in the case of sign multiplication msb bit is going to store or it is going to preserve the sign of a number if you are making use of sign multiplication wherever mul i have written you write i mul similarly if i am talking about division you can perform unsigned division or you can perform sign division if you want to make use of unsigned division just write div if you want to make use of sign division you need to write i div now if you are writing div space one operand nothing but this operand if it is of 8 bit wide then you are performing ax divided by operand 1 nothing but numerator is by default it is ax register divided by operand 1 and the result is having in quotient and the quotient and remainder will be put back in al register and ah register say suppose you are performing div space bl what actually you are doing is ax divided by bl put back the result in quotient nothing but al register and ax register now if you are performing division followed by an operand one if it is of 16 bit wide so what you are going to do is you are going to perform 32 bit by 16 bit division actually the thumb rule what it says is if the denominator size is of 8 bit then the numerator size should be of 16 bit wide now the default operand is dx ax divided by operand 1 and you are going to preserve the quotient in ax register and remainder in dx register so the keyword what you are going to do is <coughs> the instruction what you are going to give is divs followed by one operand example div space bx if you want to perform sign division at the time you are going to make use of id next let us talk about programming formats in c and microprocessor 8086 in the case of c program you are going to make use of preprocessor directive nothing but ash include stdio.h similarly here you are going to make use of dot model small or you are going to write it as large tiny why you are going to do is if you are making use of only one core segment and extra segment if you are going to make use of only one core segment and data segment you can write it as small if that code segment and data segment is of smaller in size you can make use of tiny if you are making use of multiple data segments or multiple code segments you need to declare it as large now the data types in the case of programming c that is character integer floating double etc similarly in the case of microprocessor 8086 you will be having db dw and dd if you want to terminate the program you are going to write it as hch in the holder compiler but nowadays it's if you are writing or if you are closing the flower bracket it is more than enough but the dos interrupts are move ah comma 4 ch and int 21 h so this is very very important at last for termination you are going to make use of assembler directive that is end now if i am talking about branching instruction 
Usually, your program execution will be sequential in nature. What this branch instruction will be doing is, it is going to deviate the program execution, nothing but it is going to skip some of the programs or it is going to skip some of the instructions or it is going to get into the subroutine and it is going to come back. So, you are having two branch instructions. The first one is call and the second one is jump. In the case of call, what you are going to do is, you are going to get into the subroutine, execute and come back. So, at last you have to write return. But in the case of jump, what you are going to do is, you are going to skip some of the instructions, nothing but some instructions you are not going to execute in the case of jump. Now, in the case of jump instructions, we are having two variants. The first one is conditional jump and the second one is unconditional jump. Example is jump on parity, jump on zero, jump on carry, jump on equal, jump on not equal, etc. In the case of unconditional branch, you are having two variants, jump if near, jump if far. And in the case of flag manipulation instructions, if you want to set only carry flag, so what you can do is, you can make use of an instruction that is CLC. If you want to complement the carry, make use of CMC, set carry, STC. So this table is very, very important if you are writing a program. And in the case of logical instructions, not and or XOR is very, very important. If you want to perform XNOR, what you have to do is, you have to perform first XOR operation, then you have to perform not operation or negation operation. Next, let us talk about assembly directives, define byte, define word, define double word. So this is similar to a character, this is similar to an integer, this is similar to a float. Next, shift and rotate instructions are very, very important. Again, we are having two types of shifts. One is logical shift and the second one is arithmetic shift. Left shift and right shift is there. In the case of shift left logical, that is denoted by SHL, operand comma, how many counts you have to do? Nothing but how many times of shifts you have to do? If you are writing one, only one time it is shifted. If you are writing two, two times the data will be shifted. Shift arithmetic left SAL operand comma count. So you need to know the difference between logical shift and arithmetic shift. And again, rotate, what is the difference between a rotate and shift? Now look at over here, in the case of shift, what you are going to do is, say suppose I am performing left shift. So, MS bit you are going to lose and this data, what you are going to feed, 1 or 0 is very, very important. But if I am talking about rotate, if I am performing rotate left, this MSB bit will come and sit in the LSB and 7th position data will be coming and sitting into the 8th position. If I am considering 8 bit, say suppose if I am considering 16 bit, then 14th data will be coming and sitting in the 15th and 15th data will be coming and sitting in the 0th position. So this is the difference between a shift and rotate operation. With and without carry, you should know. This is very, very important. N number of times they have asked the difference between rotate without carry and rotate with carry, shift with carry, shift without carry. So this is very, very important. Now this topic is very, very important. You have to know the difference between a macros and a procedure. Macros and procedure are similar to a subroutine. So whenever you are going to call a macro, so the entire body will come and sit in the main program. Nothing but logical memory is going to get increased. In the case of procedure, only control moves to the function body, executes and return back. At the time of returning, in the case of macros, it can return a null value, a single value, two values, three values, up to n values it can return. But in the case of procedure or function, at max it can return only a one value. So program length seems to be lengthy, but here it is simple. Used when subroutine as less instructions, but here instruction length does not matter. Execution speed is very much faster because here in the case of procedure, context switching has to be takes place. Nothing but saving and restore has to be takes place. But in the case of macros, already the instruction sets are available. So difficult to debug if errors found in a lengthy program, but it is easy to debug because a function what is the input you are giving? What is the output you are getting from the function? You can easily debug. Now, if I am talking about a syntax, how are you going to call a macro? Just write the macro name in the code segment. But in the case of procedure, you have to write it as call followed by proc name. Nothing but procedure name or function name what you are giving, just that one you have to define. Now, what is the syntax? Syntax is you have to define a macro name followed by macro corresponding statements end m. So all these things you are going to write it in data segment. This is very, very important. But in the case of procedure, procedure name, proc, near or far. If it is near, then explicitly you have to write it as near. You have to write the corresponding statements. Then how to terminate the procedure is 
write the procedure name followed by end pin this is an assembler directive so this is very very important again i am reminding you the difference between procedure and the macros are very very important now if i am talking about 8086 interrupts now if i am already classifying 8086 interrupts i can classify into hardware interrupt and software interrupt also denoted by intn now in the case of hardware interrupts you are having maskable interrupts example is intr and the second one is non maskable interrupt that is nmi now in the case of software interrupt you are going to determine by int0 int1 int2 so on to you are going to define up to int255 now if i am talking about int0 it is an error nothing but divide by zero error whenever you are performing a division if denominator equals to zero then you can't perform division so the error will be int0 nothing but divide by zero error for single step execution you are going to make use of int1 it is generated by your program so int2 it is nmi int3 it is a breakpoint interrupt int4 it is an overflow interrupt int21 is dos interrupt like that you have to remember few basic interrupts now this hardware interrupt is generated by your peripherals or hardware things all the hardware interrupts you are going to accept from pin number 17 and pin number 18 pin number 17 is connected with an nmi nothing but non maskable interrupt whenever this interrupt has occurred you have to give the service nothing but microprocessor is going to provide the service you can't block this interrupt but in the case of intr that is connected to pin number 18 to acknowledge inta nothing but interrupt acknowledgement is used at the end of interrupt program compulsory you have to write iret in the case of call what you are going to do is you are going to make use of ret but in the case of interrupt return you are going to make use of iret now this question they have asked a number of times whenever an interrupt occurs what microprocessor is going to do whenever an interrupt occurs microprocessor is going to finish the current instruction nothing but current instruction it is going to completely it is going to execute then if it is nothing but if the interrupt is of higher priority it will be getting into isr or it is going to provide the service to the interrupt and it is going to return back and executes so this is how interrupt works now if i'm talking about applications of interrupt used to check memory parity error used during critical response time used during non recoverable hardware error also it can also be used as an watchdog timer interrupt causing peripherals are example is keyboard mouse cd rom dvd floppy disk etc some practice questions i have given over here please pause the video and just try to answer all this 20 questions if you can able to answer all 20 questions it's well and good if not you try to watch the video again so that you will be getting familiar with respect to the microprocessor 8086 so that you can get maximum marks in this subject so in this video we have revised microprocessor 8086 if you have followed with my lecture please give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel Craving Yang. also join our telegram group thank you friends all the best for your results